of them and the experience that I have consulting to police chiefs in the past, as well as from my military background, I think they're, they're way off track. I think they have a serious issue. I don't think that the police service board and the police chief really understand the challenge that they have. I really don't. They're like the frog that's been in the, in the pot of water since it was cold. And as it turns up to boiling, they don't notice that it's going to kill them any minute. It just seems a smidge hotter than it was two seconds ago. Uh, but like most crises, it's a smoldering one. And I think that they need to do something about it. The, 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 the pivot point, though, that's brought things to a head in Toronto was the police budget. And I advocated on this radio station and in print in the uh, Toronto Sun and on my own blog at 2e.com, shameless plug right there, uh, that uh, the city council should actually just hold us, bowl us, ad hoc, cut their budget by up to 10%, because that would create a crisis in the minds of the police chief and senior leadership there, and only when they feel the feet burning the soles of their feet, the fire burning the soles of their feet, are they really going to actually do anything? That's how we got spending under control at City Hall. We created a crisis. Uh, that's how things happen in the business world. That's what I did for a living for a dozen years, is, is help people manage crises and create them where they needed them and change things. And, and I'm hoping that the police will get that. They have created, on the heels of a report from KPMG, which came out with a bunch of options, a new task force. And I have been skeptical of the task force and uh, might remain a little bit skeptical of the task force because it was it, it's going to be chaired jointly first of all anything that's chaired jointly pff, what are they going to do they're going to yeah I, I, that that immediately is a knock against its credibility to some extent by the police chief and the chair of the police service board neither of those two gentlemen andy pringle or mark saunders do i see having any interest in really changing anything from the status quo they just want to kind of make this problem go away uh, and then they've named a bunch of senior police officers. Why would they want to change anything? They've named a bunch of citizens, but two names jumped out to me. Uh, one, Jeff Griffiths, a former Auditor General of the city, uh, at City Hall, and my guest in studio today, David Soknacki, who has done a lot of things. He's a very successful businessman who was a city councillor in Scarborough, then a city councillor in the city of Toronto. He was the budget chief for, I think, uh, three years with David Miller, uh, helping make sure things didn't get even worse <laughs> under David Miller <laughs> by managing uh, the budget as best it could be managed, ran for mayor in uh, 2014. He joins me today, and he was named to this panel, and it gives me a smidgen of hope. David Saknacki, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mark. You know, I don't know how to start my remarks, because I think you've got maybe about four or five open metaphors there during the intro. I'm a good mixed metaphor kind of guy. Uh, yeah, so... This is my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I think we can jump jump right in there. Uh, look, a lot of people in Toronto, including me, are frustrated, uh, even angry, that the, the police leaders don't seem to be taking this seriously. The, the crisis in public confidence on the culture side and the simple fact that the budget just keeps growing and nobody at police headquarters, even in the police service, but seems to give a damn. Now we have this new uh, task force that, that you've been appointed to. Why should anybody think anything is going to change or then that this isn't just another stalling tactic? Well, Mark, as, as we were saying during the, uh, uh, the opening there, during, during the news, that was uh, certainly my perspective at the beginning, too. And uh, as I've shared with, with you and your colleagues in the, in the media, I said no. I said no a couple of times. And so I you said, turned down an initial overture to, to yeah, be part of Yeah, a this. couple of times. Why? Uh, uh, to, to the mayor. And uh, I, I said to him that I didn't think that either his heart was in change uh, nor Chair Pringle, Andy Pringle's um, heart uh, in the change. Both of those gentlemen uh, picked up the phone and uh, I, I went down and, and, and met with Andy and we had a number of heart-to-heart um, uh, -heart discussions about it. And I said, I was, I'm coming on only because you want to make change. Uh, substantive, uh, transformative change. Not change for the sake of change of being radical, um, I'd like to start off with, with your actually first comment right, right out of the uh, news broadcast. It's not because you dislike the police, but it's because it's so important. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's the glue. Um, and the other thing is that any changes that we make aren't for the sake of change, but they're, they're, they could be for the, uh, the sake of investing elsewhere in, in, in our public infrastructure. So what did they say that changed your mind about being part of this process? They said, how would you like, a, how would you like to change? What would you like to see change. And I said, well, it needs to be transfer transformational. It needs to have everything on the table. Uh, you've got the format. I mean, we're inside of a large city organization, inside of a large police organization. I get that. And I think a lar large number of your readers do get that. But at the same time, 
um, let's let's look at everything. We're not there to reinvent the wheel, not there to blue sky. I think um, the public thinks and believes, as do I, we got enough reports and recommendations out there. Right. Let's put the realistic ones on the table and get them through. So do you, do you honestly believe that this task force will result in action and not just another review of studies that looked at different reviews got of studies? To. It got to, because as, as I've said a number of times, it's our last, be last best chance, because we've got people on the right of the spectrum. They're seeing crime going down and they're saying, hey, wait a minute, what's, what are we getting from this? People on the left side of the political spectrum saying policing has to change because society has changed. And now what you've got, which we didn't have before, we don't have people in their silos thinking different things. We've got this, this overall view of the public saying we need a change. And I think that that time has come, plus this huge pile of reports, right? Plus, and uh, you mentioned uh, Jeff Griffiths. I've got a lot of time for, for Jeff. Uh, Emmanuel, um, um, sorry, Michelle D'Emmanuel, who's made some major change in the hospital area. Um, three of us are there, uh, plus others, of course, on, on, on the committee, are saying now is the time and it has to be major change. So what, what have you been told? What do you understand the mandate of the committee? What's the objective? There, there must be a simple declarative sentence that sort of this is the mission of the task force. What is that? The mission of the task force is transformative change of the police service. To execute it or to... It's to make the recommendation to the police services board. Okay. They're, they're, the ex, they're, they're the implementation body. And the chair of the police services board is part of the commission, so one would hope that if he signs off on the recommendation as part of the task force that they're going to do this. As is Chief Saunders, he's right. the one to make things happen. So they're in the room. Uh, they're the chairs of the committee. They are uh, certainly during the early discussions and first meeting very sensitive to what uh, the group is saying. And so, you know, things, yes, they can fall off the rails. Yes, we all have a cynicism. Myself, I'm, I'm there with you on that. But at the same time, um, the stars are aligning for change and people recognize that the same thing isn't good enough. You know, when you started off your program, uh, you mentioned about the... Um, uh, the ideas that uh, Councillor Mike Thompson had, right? And uh, yes, I know it was 13 to whatever it was, but at the same time, it represented a, uh, a real threat and a real wake-up call because people everywhere recognize that the status quo is no longer enough, and it's not a cliche. It's not only is the status quo not enough, but here's the recommendation. So for heaven's sake, implement some of them. I'm still not convinced that it's a wake-up call. I think they're still snoozing at the police service board and the police chief because they, 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 they got out of this one so they can get out of the next one, so, I think. But, but, but Mark, uh, we'll, we'll, hold, hold, that, hold that thought, and we're going to talk about that, about how do we wake these guys up and some specific uh, things that I hope uh, you might have on your list of, of areas that have to be looked at. I'm also interested in the listeners at 416-872-1010. This is the time to call. I'd love to know what you think needs to change. Is it just about budget, or is there a cultural issue as well that we've got to address in Trump? Hey, welcome back. I'm talking with uh, David Sagnacki. You'll know the name from uh, the 2014 mayor's race. You'll know the name from Toronto City Council. He's been a budget chief. He's been a Scarborough councillor before amalgamation. Now he's been appointed. He's a very successful businessman in his own right. Now he's been appointed to the uh, the new task force set up by Police Chief Mark Saunders. Uh, the mayor has signed off on this, and uh, the chair of the Toronto Police Services Board, Andy Pringle. Uh, this task force is charged to look at ways to transform Toronto's police service. Uh, I'd be interested in your ideas about what they need to fix. What are the problems? What are the things that you think they need to change? Toot sweet. 416-872-1010 is the number to call me at. You can also text at me at 71010. Um, David, we were talking uh, during the break about a few things, but uh, basically what do you think needs to change? Can you think of a couple of things? Like, are there things that you're going in with from your experience in the past, looking at this budget as a budget chief, uh, as a concerned citizen, as a prospective mayor, you had some ideas in your campaign. What do they need to do differently fairly quickly? Well, I think that we're all coming in this, like uh, Jeff, Jeff Griffiths, for example, and, 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 some, and some of the other people are coming at this, uh, each with our own baggage. And uh, what I think is more important than having each one of us trying to blue sky 
is that huge catalog of recommendations that are already there. The KPMG report, uh, the Chief Zone report, uh, former Chair Mukherjee's report. There's all of these things that are there. And so, yes, I'm going to bring up some of the things that I think are important, but I would like to think that uh, our former Auditor General will be bringing up his ideas as well. So there's piles and piles of suggestions that are there. Got a text at seven ten ten from uh, somebody saying uh, he never agrees with me, but today we're both uh, bang on. Uh, uh, he thinks this is a stall tactic as well. Uh, just spent a bundle of money on the KPMG report. Implement that. There, there's a good point. I read through the KPMG report. I think it was a damning indictment of leadership at the police service, but it did have some very good directional ideas. Why can't they just take that and, and go with it? Exactly, Mark. And what we've done as well... Uh, already and i don't want to sh share what 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 our what our, what our process is but we've already put that on the table uh as well as the other recommendations as as i've mentioned and that's going to be forming the agenda the other thing a stall tactic well we've got a um about practically eight weeks of work to uh, uh before before we start writing the report because it's due you have to report back in june is that right first of june first of june okay so end of may really you have to have this thing printed yeah, up and ready yeah, to go yeah yeah too sweet and, and so what we've got is, is not a lot of time for blue skying or, 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 or stalling. We've got all of those reports. What we've got to do is prioritize them, run them through the reasonableness checks of, of uh, officers and, and, and management, and say, here's the plan. Okay. Let's go to the phone lines at uh, 416-872-1010. We've got Ernie who's calling in right now from Niagara Falls. Uh, you had a suggestion, Ernie, on uh, one of the first things to do. Go ahead. The first thing to do is to uh, take control of the police budget again. Uh, instead of going to the police and saying, hey, what do you need to operate this year? You have the city pass their budget with the allotment for the police department. Turn around to the police services board and say, this is what you've got to work with. Go and make it work, uh, whether it's a cut or an increase or whatever. And uh, I'll tell you right now, that if you cut $25 million and they say that's 400 officers, the minute those layoff notices go out, the police union... Oh, we lost Ernie. Uh, so I, I think Ernie is right in the crisis. It, it, like right now, I argued for and, and still believe that the Toronto City Council should have just cut their budget. $25 million, I think, is small potatoes. I would have gone for $100 million. Create some real pressure. That's how Liberal Premier or Prime Minister Paul Martin, when he was the finance minister, that's how he got Canada's deficit under control. I remember being in National Defense late one night eating pizza in a boardroom at the base here in Toronto watching the budget to learn that, hey, we've just been cut by 60% the following year. We've just been eliminated completely, and yet all the work had to get done. So we knew that we had the same amount of work to be done with 40% or 60% fewer dollars, it took us then the rest of the year to figure out how to deliver that before we ran out of cash. Uh, why you've been a budget chief on the city side, now you're looking at it from, a, from an action-oriented task force, why couldn't the city just do that and say, this is how much we think we can afford to spend on, on policing? Make it, make it so. Whatever number you pick, it's going to be 90% salaries. Why? Why can't they change that? Because like you we're opening the box well, and throwing off all the walls. Because you've got a collective agreement. And the collective agreement with both the police association and the management is that 90%. And so let me just finish for a second, Mark. So what's going to happen then is you're going to say, okay, so you know, I agree. We've cut the paper clips and we've cut the binders and we cut this and that and the other thing. But once you start going into that collective agreement, um, you've got major legal issues and so forth. That's why you've got to be transformative and take a look and say, okay, so instead of cutting... X percent off the top, and you really can't. Now you might want to take a look and say, well, should the police have in its budget, I'm just picking some, some, uh, some crossing guards, or should it have the parking system, or should it have uh, various functions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what you might need to do, or what we actually need to do instead of just saying it's X percent, is say, what's the core business of the police or the core endeavors? And then 
take it as the, uh, as a different approach rather than just saying it's a hundred million. So therefore, we're we're cutting a class, or we're cutting this, or we're cutting that. Okay, I think the ship has sailed on the just cut their budget thing. So I'm not going to belabor that point now. But I do think that the city. But it's budget coming should, back. That boat's coming right. back. And I do think that the city needs to say this is how much we can afford to spend on policing: nine hundred million dollars. That's it. And and have the police force figure that out because that's the only way they're going to change. You're right. It has to be transformative change. But I hope that you won't let the police officers. There's six police officers plus the chief on this on this committee with you.